uh, get into the papers now, look at the stories making headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have with me in the studio Chris K. Lengwandu, the CEO of CKN News. Uh, I wonder if it is Lagwaja that is sitting close to me or it's is it Lagwaja CKN. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, nice man. Nice to see you, though. It's nice, nice to, to see be you. Here. You know, nice coronavirus has made all of us masquerades Where? one way or the other, but Lagwaja, uh, it's better to be safe. Lagwaja for so this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into, uh, let's start with the uh, Daily Times now. Daily Times newspaper says uh, Senate NDDC fight over cash. All right. Senate NDDC fight over cash. All right, from there, let's go to the news direct. Buhari to sign 10.8 trillion Naira revised 2020 budget today. And uh, as two governors to join the federal government in implementation of 2.3 trillion Naira stimulus program, excess crude account stood at $72.4 million. Okay, that's uh, news direct. The Blueprint newspaper is the next now and uh, is talking about Ondo 2020. The elections are due in about October. Assembly is bid to impeach Deputy Governor Suffer setback. A CJ contends with constitutional hurdles and of 17 required as two-third majority, 14 OK process. We've served a Jai notice as the clerk is saying that and 10 APC aspirants oppose uh, indirect primaries and accused Fayemi uh, Rufai Amechi of uh, stoking crisis, all right? All that from uh, Undo uh, politics. Daily Trust is the next uh, uh, point of call now. Uh, panel orders EFCC directors to account for five-year role. Whoa, all right? Uh, panel orders EFCC directors to account for five-year role. Uh, that's what uh, Daily Trust has. And let's go to the Leadership Friday. Leadership Friday is from uh, fallout from the COVID-19 breakthrough as Nigeria creates own testing kits. On 400 health workers, FCT Health Secretary and Nasara Attorney General test positive. And NEC PTF to meet on reopening of schools and others. And WAHU urges, uh, that's the West African Health Organization, urges Nigeria and others to mitigate the impact of pandemic on the vulnerable. We have all of that uh, uh, and others, story headlines in there. From there, let's go to the national economy. Okay, unified exchange rate will boost investment market confidence. Economists are saying this, okay. Uh, remember at the time we used to have about 11 exchange rates for different uh, uh, sectors and for different uh, endeavors and all of that. Okay, uh, that's, that's the national economy. Okay, uh, CKN, let me bring you to the issue of Ondo, the build-up to Ondo politics. Uh, let's just glide that th through that uh, briefly. I, I believe you've been going through what's going on there, and Edo is on one hand. Ondo has also started, especially when the deputy governor did come to uh, another political party, and there has been uh, the, the moves to impeach the deputy governor and all that, the back and forth. But what do you make generally when it comes to the build-up to political party elections in Nigeria? Election is seen as one uh, ingredient of entrenching democracy. But at elections, it looks like we are always going for war. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, a former Nigerian president said... Uh, uh, at one point during one of the elections that it's a do or die mm. thing. Mm. Uh, it was only uh, Good Lord Jonathan when he came um, in 2015 and said that this uh, election is not worth anybody's law. Mm. So that, is, that has always been it. Not only now, not since 1999, but even right from uh, uh, the First Republic. Yeah, you, you have to understand how the First Republic collapsed, especially starting from the, from the Southwest and what happened in Ibadan politics then. So what we're having now is just a, a continuation of what we're used to. Nigerians don't know how to play politics. Um, politics to me should be like football. Uh, Mind you played last night. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you played last night. And uh, they won 3-0. Mm. And the other team, they, uh, it's after the match. You exactly. saw what they were doing. Exactly. They were hugging each other, uh -huh. shaking each other. The coaches <laughs> were... sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Mm. That is what politics is supposed to be. And that is what it is. Uh, in, across the globe, especially in the Western world. But we in Nigeria and mostly Africa, we just say that it's a winner's take it all affairs, and that shouldn't be. So, what is happening in uh, um, Undo is, a, is just a, 
um, a recap of what we are used to. But it's rather unfortunate that there are proper procedures to go about this. If you want to impeach a deputy governor or a governor, there are procedures. Mm -hmm. The constitution has been very fair and exactly. them put out the modalities. But uh, as we always say, what the uh, State House of Assembly is doing now is try to deplete the membership so that they can have the, the, yeah. the two-third <laughs> <laughs> majority. But the, the law is clear on that. Very, very clear. Very clear on that. Mike, the law is clear. The, but it, has to be, it has to be two-thirds majority of not the persons present, but no. of the entire of the, constituted members of the National Mike, of the, of we the Assembly. Mike, we are in this country. We are seven lawmakers impeached governors. Yeah, You remember exactly. vividly? Of course, so, of course. So uh, I think this impunity should just, we should be able to do something about it. And the, at the end of it, they say go to court mm. and uh, let the court decide. It happened in Imo State. Yeah. You remember what happened between Okrocha and his deputy? Exactly. And um, at the end of it, all, the court decided in favor of the deputy government. But by then, the governor had finished his tenure. Exactly. So that is what is playing out now. Um, I, I think those, those gladiators, you also realize the fact that they are here just momentarily. Anything can happen tomorrow. Mm. We have seen um, politicians, leaders and the rest of them die. Nobody knows what will happen mm. in the next day. But some, some would, when issues like this come up and you ask some politicians, they say, well, these are the beauties of democracy. But the point there is, we, we are 20 years into the Fourth Republic mm -hmm. and we've had close to uh, 2009, 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, 2019. We've had six general elections so far and other staggered elections here and there. I wonder if we're making that incremental step-by-step -step marginal progress towards entrenching democratic uh, tenets. Yes, we are. Um, we are marginally, as you said. Mm. Um, this is not the beauty of democracy. Whoever is saying that, this is not what democracy is all about. Democracy is about, the, if we write from primary school, we are taught what democracy, mm. the, you know, Policy, the definition is very clear. Exactly. Government of the people, <laughs> by the people, and for the people. Simple. So when it's not for the people and by the people, definitely that is not democracy. So what we are trying to practice is not democracy. But the fact remains that we should be able to play by the game. Um, would have been imaginary. Mike, that was a time in our polity. I don't, I don't know whether it's the, the second tenure or the, where we are having governors impeach practically mm. every mm. other month mm. and thereabouts. Mm. So we have improved the uh, bet. What is happening now is the soul of the politics in um, those state. Mm. The governor fell out with his deputy, fell out with SSG, fell out with some of his um, party um, uh, faithful party officials and, and, and the rest mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he is, he, whether to impeach or not to impeach the deputy governor, mm. but I personally, I think that this, we should still look at the moral ground. The moral ground, apart from politics, is the fact that if you have decided to leave a party as a deputy governor of, uh, as a deputy to a governor, definitely, morally, I personally think that you should just let go if you want to contest on another platform. Mm. But a governor cannot be holding a meeting, a, 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 a state executive meeting, with somebody that is from another political party. How feasible that is, is not so. Uh, our people should be able to well, know how to play it, the politics. But, but when it comes to the issue of uh, governance, yes. the cons that is where the constitution covers that. Because yeah. if, if, the, if, the go if the deputy governor, whether he belongs to another political party, mm. uh, so long as it is the state executive council, mm -hmm. the, the deputy governor of any other political party can be around or should be around. It is only when it is a party affair that he cannot be around. Isn't that so what it's supposed to be? That's not what it's supposed to be, man. Oh, yes, not that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> you, uh, are the, yes. you are the legal person. So. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is, Mike, in the United States, mm. imagine Donald Trump, okay? Now, Donald Trump and Spence belonging to different political parties. Mm. Let's say um, Spence goes Pence. to the Democrat, yeah. yes, uh -huh. goes to a Democrat party, and you want to have a, a federal executive council, and you expect that deputy mm. or this. Um, uh, uh, Vice President of the United mm. States, who now belongs to the... But the, cons the Constitution can... didn't say that if you, but, if you defect another political party, you lose that your, is the your office. That's the lack now we have to look mm. at. I think uh, we, are having, we have to look at the Constitution, basically. There was a time in the National Assembly that um, uh, people had to go to court, and court made a pronouncement that once it comes to another party, mm. you lose your seat. Exactly. I don't know how effective we've been using that. So I personally believe that. We're waiting you to cannot, test that. You cannot uh, hold the stick and still hold the carrot. Yeah. You understand what I mean? You have to, if you're leaving, just it's better to so that we don't uh, continue with this kind how of How would all of these wranglings, uh, how would they impact the, the, the process of the election? Especially, we had just about two months or so, 
two or three months away from the Ondo election. How would it impact uh, the election proper? Positively and negatively, hmm. depending. Um, the, the APC is depleted, as it were. Uh, PDP is not too, too strong, if I should use the word, in Ondo State. So the, um, the APC may likely still pick up um, the ticket uh, hmm. at the end of your bet. Um, it is a tough call to make because the deputy, if you look at the deputy governor's um, supporters also look at that of SSG. People will say, oh, who is ordinary? SSG is just an ordinary appointee. It's not just an ordinary appointee. Mm. For him to have made an SSG, that means that he has made his impact within the policy mm. of, this, uh, of the party before you understand what I'm saying. To say. So it is now for the governor who is me. Don't forget, he's not the sole candidate. Mm. The primaries have not had the, exactly. they've not they've had not the had primaries. Exactly, they have not had the primaries yet, of course. So mm. it could be anybody, but I see the, um, the, the governor picking it. What he needs to do, what they be able to do that, after the primaries, there should be some level of reconciliation between him and members of the party to be able to forge ahead. But it's going to be a tough call, just as we're going to have in Edo State. All right, let's get straight to, uh, head straight to the papers now. And I begin with the Daily Times. Senate, NDDC fight over cash. Uh, you find that story on the front page of uh, the Daily Times. And now we move to the front page of the News Direct. Buhari to sign 10.8 trillion Naira revised 2020 budget today. And then we'll move to the front page of uh, the News Direct. Buhari to sign a front, all right, Buhari to sign 10.8 trillion Naira revised 2020 budget today. And on the front page of the blueprint, Ondo 2020 assembly bid to impeach deputy governor suffers setback. And then on the front page of the Daily Trust panel orders EFCC directors to account for five-year role. To the front page of the leadership newspaper now, COVID-19 breakthrough as Nigeria creates own testing kits, 400 health workers, federal uh, Capital Territory Health uh, Secretary Nasarawa uh, AG test positive, NEC PTF to meet on reopening of school, others, uh, Wahoo urges Nigeria, others to mitigate impact of pandemic on the vulnerable. We'll be looking at this story uh, shortly. And we move now to the front page of uh, the national economy. Uh, unified exchange rate will boost investment markets confidence economists. All right, gentlemen, let's look at uh, the story on the front page of the leadership newspaper talking about uh, the breakthrough uh, Nigeria could be recording with the creation of its own testing kits. We have been talking about homegrown solutions. Uh, when uh, we remember when the Madagascar COVID organic came, a lot of Nigerians were saying uh, Nigeria should be, you know, leading the pack with uh, homegrown solutions like this. And now we are coming up with perhaps a testing kit. I'll start with you, CKN. Uh, how much of a breakthrough is this? It's good news um, because at the end of it all, well, we still have to rely on our local content um, mm. on, in, in finding solutions to some of these problems. So uh, we cannot continue relying on uh, foreign countries to get um, um, some of these kits and even drugs because they also uh, bored down with um, a lot of uh, problems themselves. Uh, in the United States of America already has stopped the export of certain drugs mm -hmm. to other parts of the world because, because they want to take care of their own uh, people. So for us, if we can be able to find a solution to some of this, and this also will help in our testing uh, because part of what the problem we're having now is that we don't have enough PPE, um, then we don't also have, we are not testing enough. Out of a, a country of about, um, a 180 to 200 million people. Mm. We just, we've tested just about, uh, we have about um, uh, 30,000 uh, people being positive. When never is it in countries like Ghana uh, and also South Africa with lesser population. Uh, yeah. So we need to, so we, this is a good news for us. If that can be well certified. Mm. All right, uh, before I come to you, Shasson, and before we also continue with uh, the review of the newspaper this morning, uh, we told you earlier that uh, the lawmaker representing Kushofe Constituency 2 in the Lagos State House of Assembly, Tunde Braimo, is dead. Uh, we now join TVC correspondent Abimbala Agwebi, who is at his residence for more 
on this. But uh, until his death, he was the Chairman House Committee on Information, Security and Strategy in the Lagos State House of Assembly. All right, quickly uh, talk to us uh, what is happening at his residence as we speak. What details do we have concerning his death? Yes, uh, Veronica, we are live from the Ugudu residence of the lawmaker representing Kosho Fair Constituency 2 in the Lagos State House of Assembly. Honorable Tunde Brahimo died at about 12 midnight this morning. And uh, of course, behind me, among us here who have come to pay condolence, you know, visit to uh, the deceased family. The, som the mood here, uh, Veronica, I can tell you, is somber. When we got in here, it was clear that indeed the lawmaker is dead. You can see people folding their arms, talking in low tones. I stepped up. Uh, I could see uh, the deceased wife and then, of course, I think uh, 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 relations and are all in there. You know, everybody in a somber mood this morning, uh, uh, Veronica honorable details of his death as i speak uh, though are still very sketchy but then we heard that the lawmaker took heel a few days ago and then died shortly you know after the brief illness veronica all right uh, we see like you have rightly pointed out uh, persons who have come to commiserate with the family are uh, speaking on low tunes where have you been able to speak with any of them on what uh, they can recall uh, uh, about uh, Tunde Braimo at, at this point. Yes, I uh, walked up to some of the uh, people I believe are members of the family who of course you should know they are not uh, in the mood to speak to anyone now. I also saw the driver earlier, his personal driver, who of course is um, just there on the floor, so heartbroken in tears. He, he couldn't say a word to me, you know, about uh, what happened. I recall that the death of the lawmaker is coming about 18 days after the demise of uh, uh, his counterpart in the upper legislative chamber. I'm talking about Honorable. Sikiru Adibayo Oshino, who also was uh, a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, who died on the 14th of June, 2020. Veronica. All right, uh, Abimbala, we'll definitely get back to you for more updates. But thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. Um, may he so continue to rest in peace. Uh, Shesson, uh, let's get back to uh, our focus on uh, the newspaper uh, this morning, talking about... Uh, Nigeria uh, seemingly having a breakthrough with uh, the development of a test kit. I'm certain this must come to you as some major news. Shasa, can you hear me? I, I asked. Let's, that, uh, the, the breakthrough, uh, as it is being uh, said on the front page of the leadership newspaper of Nigeria, uh, developing its own test kit must come to you as uh, some sort of uh, great news. Yeah, thank you very much, Veronica. It's a great news and it's part of what we've actually been uh, yearning for. Because if you look at uh, most of the developed uh, country, now, everybody is looking internally, and uh, for anyone to grow anything in this part of the world, you must consider the internal thing for you to grow. If this is certified, okay. The other aspect we will want people to believe is things made in this country are good and very reliable. We can do it, we can make it. Because you can imagine the invention of this will definitely increase the employment rate and it's going to increase the level at which we are going to test more people to confirm at the level at which this uh, communal transmission of this project has actually gone. So it's a good news and what we want is that this can be developed not only in the health sector but every other aspect of the economy and for our people to have confidence in what we are developing ourselves. And that's the major issue, uh, Shesson, talking about having confidence uh, in whatever is being produced in Nigeria. How do you see Nigerians perhaps embracing this new development? 
Yeah, it, 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 it's something that we must know that even in China and the developed countries we are celebrating today, started with try and error. Some of those products will come, they will test it, and there are bound to be improvement and things progressing. So our people should have that confidence that things that are being produced in this part of the world, Nigeria in particular, uh, a leader in this uh, part of the, uh, of the continent, we should have that confidence. It can work. You know, even in the, in the things we we'll wear, let's, let's have confidence in it, and this will give the manufacturer the boldness to do more. For a situation where we prefer important things, Mm. All right, uh, uh, CK and I, let me come back to you. Asha is talking about uh, how Nigerians being confident uh, with uh, this uh, something homegrown. We see how Nigerians react when you talk about uh, homemade products and all of that. Are you confident that this is something Nigerians will readily embrace? We have no choice than to embrace it. Um, you have to be satisfied. You know, you have to satisfy it. Uh, once it's satisfied, then uh, it's good to go. Uh, what I can only uh, ask is the federal government to be able to give some develop incentives to the various organizations. Uh, industry. You would recall that uh, yes. the, the uh, Ogbonaya uh, on who talked about uh, injecting about 36 million to yeah. any sort of homegrown solution yes. to fight uh, COVID-19. Perhaps uh, that might be directed, that yes. amount might be directed yes. to this. Yes, and uh, if we can get it right and we produce in large quantity, then we can also um, um, export to other neighboring other countries. countries like Nigeria. After all, we went to Madagascar to pick up the, the deers. You understand what I mean? Mm. So some neighboring countries in West Africa who don't have those facilities can also um, get from us. That is also is a, a sort of foreign exchange for us. But for me, the whole essence is for us to be able to test more. We are not testing more. Mm. And people are dying. And uh, if you cannot be able to test uh, enough, then you just don't, you, you don't know how what, what um, the number of people that within Cons our community considering the fact that we ha the level at which we are now is community spread it is community spread and the numbers keep rising then so this will do a lot it to will change because that. it also uh, but uh, then again the concern tracing. will be if we have tested yeah. do we have the capacity for isolation well that also be, that's another problem um, but let us even test to be able to detect those that have um, but we have to also expand um, our isolation centers. Um, it, it, it's good that the government is also uh, parling with um, corporate organizations and the rest of them. I know that there was a committee that was set up and they've raised certain funds. Um, then this is time for us also to be able to engage in building more capacity. But personally, I also think that uh, we should be able to put permanent infrastructures on ground. Uh, we should be able to put permanent, because what we are doing now is more temporary uh, infrastructure, mm. um, canopies and the rest of them. There should be a short-term and a long-term solution to some of these issues because after COVID-19, we don't know what it was. We had Ebola. Most of the infrastructure we put in, uh, on ground for Ebola got dismantled. Maybe we, uh, we are done with it. That of COVID, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should just be, yes, there, there will be temporary solutions, but we also look at permanent. This is the time for the state government as well as the federal government to build up, up our capacity. What, what is our budget for health? Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. There is a word, the WHO and the world body gave a percentage that we, every year that we're able to uh, budget for health, how much are we budgeting for health? We're not even doing enough. So, but for me, this is a good one. Once NAVDAC and necessary uh, agencies. Uh, agencies have been able to confirm that, then we're mm. good to go. All right, gentlemen, we'll leave the conversation here now. Shesno Kwade, thank you for joining us. CKN, thank you as well for Thanks joining for us on the newspaper review this morning. You're